Hey everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Q&A, got a bunch of good questions. Do some past concept stuff, dive into some QB stuff. I'm really excited. Should be a great one. Welcome to the QB School. All right, you enjoy this kind of content. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications. Let it you know when we get more content posted all the time. Keep this thing growing. I appreciate the support. Again, subscribe, bell, thank you. All right, first question, Noah Mayers. Hey, JT, I was wondering what passing concepts you usually go well together. For ex example, for example, a corner and a spot on one side. What route would go well with this concept on the other side? Noah, excellent question. So this is, it's a little bit more complicated then I'm probably going to be able to kind of fill in the blanks here is this little short video or what I hope is a short video but it depends right like so I can't tell you that you know there's one specific concept that is great tethered with the spot concept or with the smash concept what I can tell you is that I prefer offenses and I prefer to play in offenses and coach offenses that are flexible and adaptive and what I mean by that is I like to think of it as basically a few different ways to do it. You can have certain plays that I like to think of as pure progressions. So they're always the same. It's a full field play. So no matter what, it's one, two, three, four, whatever. And so even if it's just one, two, three, four in like a play playbook setting where you never really be able to get to that, especially at lower levels of football, that's the idea. It's a pure progression as opposed to, I think what you're inferring, or if you have a spot on one side, Maybe you have flat curl on the other side or slant flat on the other side or, you know, two verticals. And so those concepts can be mirrored together. And then the best offenses, in my opinion, are the ones that can interswitch those. And so say you want to keep working spot. You've hit it a few times, but now you don't like slant flat. You want hitches or you want two curls or you want to come back in a seam or you want two verticals to have the capacity to be able to switch that all the time. I think that's why... The digit system is really good for some teams because they can quickly do that kind of stuff on the fly. I personally like to think more in concept-based stuff, kind of what you're inferring. So spot on one side, a different concept on the other side. And I like it even better when those things can change week to week. So you can't get defenses to be like, oh, if they run spot, they run it tethered with this concept all the time. Like, no, we want it to be tethered to what we're expecting. And so the way that I design it and the way that I like to play it and learn most concepts was, okay, we like spot versus, you know, middle field closed rotation away. All right, well then what if they rotate to it in middle field closed? What would we like on the other side? Whether that's flat curl, whether that's two verticals, or how would we play spot if it's middle field open uh, cover two? How would we play it versus cover four? All right, well, if we can throw the spot versus cover four, you know, what can't we throw it against? And so let's say, you know, what would it be? Like middle field closed, rotation towards the spot, meaning that the strong safety is coming down or the safety is coming down towards the spot. Well, what would we want on the backside to be able to have an answer in case we didn't like it or we didn't get the spot? Well, maybe you want two verticals. And so you were kind of the same thing as that sluggo seam. Come up, no to the spot, back to that seam or you'd read away from the rotation, you know, middle field close. It's not just sometimes some plays are middle field close this side, middle field open this side. Some plays are middle field open. We want this concept and middle field close. We want to go away from rotation. So a really easy concept, one of the day one installation I do in high school and was on every single team in the NFL that I ever played on was two by two formation. doesn't matter what the personnel is outside guys, both running slants. Inside guys, one guy's running a one-step slant, the other guy's running a flat. So really it's slant flat on one side and two slants on the other side. And this is, to me, it's a really, really simple read. You can teach it, though I teach it usually on the day one installation, as middle field closed, slant flat, middle field open, uh, inside slant, one-step dart or now slant with the outside slant as the number two. Now, you can get more technical and say middle field closed, away from rotation, uh, man, you know, best look, matchup, quarters. You can come up, throw the flat the flat sometimes. If you get caught calling it on third down and you get two man, you got to throw the check down. You know, little things like that. That's like everything about that play in 30 seconds. 
No, you can do that about every single play. And I love plays like that because they gives you answers. That's what I'm trying to do when I'm trying to tether concepts with other concepts. I want to know, okay, this week we're playing a middle field closed man team. Well, what do they do as their auxiliary or beta defense? Like what is their secondary thing? Okay, they want to play, you know, drop eight, two, Tampa two. Well, we got to have some answers for that. So maybe we put some like option routes in or some routes where everybody runs to the first down marker and we just throw it, stick routes, you know, things like that too. You put that on one side and then you put a man beater on another side. And so that's what I like being able to do because then you got to have a quarterback who obviously can identify the coverage. Then you also got to have multiple guys that can win. You know, if you only have one guy that can get open, those type of things aren't great. But for me, what I think is the best way to think of it is what are we expecting? Okay, this is the number one defense. Let's dial up what we think would be the best play versus that. Now let's have answers. Where are we going to go? Every play needs to know what would we do versus zero. All out pressure. Where's the ball going? You know, in the quick game, anywhere, right? You just throw it to the best look. But if it's a drop back, you know, five step or play action, what are our zero answers? Got to have a zero answer. In my mind, I just go down like a menu. What are we going to do versus zero? What are we going to do versus middle field closed man? What are we going to do versus middle field closed zone? What are we going to do versus middle field open man? What are we going to do versus middle field open zone? And then from there, you know, if you're playing in the NFL, you can start to deal with middle field open combo coverages. Are they double in somebody? Is it man on one side, zone on another side? Are they triangle in somebody? Is it, you know, are they bracketing certain people? Like, what does that look like? You know, most people don't have to worry about it. I think I just want answers. Quarterbacks, you know, football players, they want to have no answers. What are our rules? What are our grounding principles? And then once you get into it, then you can just kind of make adjustments on the fly. And I think that the best offenses, the ones that I love playing in the most, give answers and give kind of options. So it's either an all purpose play. The read is the read, no matter what, one, two, three, kind of like spacing where it's slant over the ball, sit, hitch, whatever flat swing. It's one, two, three, four, five, every single time. doesn't matter what it is. Or like a drive concept where it's the triangle read every single time. But even that can change sometimes man or zone, depending on the system you're in. So as long as it's consistent, it's communicated and the quarterback knows like, Hey, I'm calling, this play is getting called because we expect middle field closed man. If we don't get that, this is the read. This is where the ball needs to go. Now, does it happen all the time? No, but that's why you have practice, right? Great, great question. I appreciate it. Before I get to the next question for most of uh, the people that appreciate this channel and I appreciate the support, notice that normally I have my own mug and I have a kind of QB school mug actually coming on the way, but I'm a homebrew type of coffee guy, but and I don't, obviously, Starbucks is not necessarily my jam all the time, but holiday time, chestnut praline latte. You're welcome. I got to drink it before it gets cold. Oh my God, that's good. Next question. Tay Evans, can you explain how the headset is as a quarterback with getting plays and getting out of the huddle in the NFL? Yes, Absolutely. Uh, pretty sure the rule is 15 seconds now. I think it used to be 18 when I was playing. But essentially, once the play is over, headset clicks on. You can't talk to the coach. One top, one coach on the sideline has to be on the sideline, has access to hit a button on their hip and talk to the quarterback. And really doesn't have to be the quarterback. It can be one person in a huddle, both on offense and defense. Back in the day, they used to have green little stickers and the referee or umpire would look to make sure that there's only one green sticker on the helmet in the huddle. So that coach can talk all the way until 15 seconds. So some quarterbacks that I've been around, they loved as much information as possible. I want you to tell me if their defense is substituting, if there's a sub in, you know, if they're in a, what specific personnel are they in? You tell me what the shell is. If you see it, if we're going fast enough, all of those things, you tell me where you want the ball. And I was around some quarterbacks who were like, just tell me the play. All I want is the play. You don't even tell me the personnel. Just tell me what I'm supposed to regurgitate in the huddle and let me play. Don't talk to me. It's too much information. I don't like it. It's weird. Whatever. I personally used to love to get as much information as possible. It felt like kind of like you're cheating, right? Like if you were taking a test and you could have, you know, a teacher basically tell you what they're seeing for the first half of the test. And then you have to answer the question yourself. Like, why wouldn't you to me? But I've been around, I think it gets a little bit complicated. I think the people are better at it in the league than necessarily when I was there, you know, 10 years ago, where most play callers are now the person on the field 
You know what I mean? So it's not like there's not like a game of telephone where the OC is in the booth. He then has to wire down to the quarterback's coach who then has to hit a button and regurgitate the play again. I think everybody's now really aware of tempo, time, in and out of the huddle. That was one of the things that I really liked about what Adam Gaze did in Denver when he was with Peyton. I thought Adam really, really, probably, I don't, I'm not going to say it was all because of me because it definitely wasn't, but he definitely heard me complain a lot about, hey, bro, you got to get the play in faster. Like, I'm not getting the play fast enough. And that was because it was coming from the coordinator to him or to someone on the sideline to then regurgitate into our helmet. And so he was really like, hey, if I ever get a chance to call plays, I'm going to make it as fast as possible. And I don't know if he still does that, but I know I th thought that that was a great attribute to what they were doing when they were really rolling in Denver with Peyton. They were playing so fast that before the next play was over, he was trying to get on their mic to be able to go fast, tell him exactly what he wanted. And it was a conscious, intentional effort to play fast. And even though you might be huddling or muddling, you know, muddle is like a fake huddle where you like come together kind of close, but you're not really in the old school, like, okay, ready, break. It's more of like, you know, here's a place and let's go. And so... To me, I used just used to love the communication element of it. It just made sense to me. It was intuitive to be like, hey, please tell me as much as possible, especially if you have somebody on the sideline who you think is really good and can help you play better, help you play faster. Yes, absolutely. So the essence of it is one-way communication until 15 seconds left on the play clock. It's great. Like You don't have to worry about like, that's why I always think it's a little weird that there's like wristbands, but that's just me. I got issues, but great question. Thanks. Next question, Albino, Lamar, hey JT, two questions. Ooh, double barrel. For the next Q&A video, one, with teams that run heavy split field coverages, is it a different preparation in the game plan during the week? If you get quarters to the field and cover two to the man or man to the boundary, does that make you second guess and complicate what you're seeing at the line of scrimmage? Do coaches just teach you to look at the shell pre and post snap and expect different variations on the same side of the field. Number two, I know you're big on footwork. So have you experimented with the mini back pedal as a drop with your shoulders parallel to the field to see everything as opposed to the crossover drop back with your shoulders closed? What drop do you teach your kids? Alvino, that first question about split field coverage is a great one considering earlier in the video too, talking about how you marry concepts together. So if you're going to play a team that plays split coverage, means a bunch of things to a bunch of different people. But to me, it means you're going to play one side of the field, either quarters or quarter, quarter, half or middle field open, man, you know, different variations of coverages on both sides of the field. I think it helps to then go into a game with an all-purpose menu. What I mean by that is you got to have stuff that's good versus everything. And so you get to a little bit more like full field reads. You know, as an example, off the top of my head, the thing that I would think about is like drive out. So... I did a video on drive that I'll probably put in here as a card right now. But the idea being that you read kind of on one side, there's a clear in and out and the other side, it would be the drive concept where shallow cross a little in and a check down. So it's really just out drive in check down, no matter what every coverage doesn't matter if it's to quarters to two man to middle field open to middle field closed. So you got to, you know, you kind of kind of marry those kind of things together where I think it just helps to be able to know going into a game, Hey, you know, don't predetermine if it's middle field open that it's always quarters. You know, they might two-man you, they might combo coverage, and they might bracket you, like all those things. And so in the league, I think it's a lot easier to be able to kind of be able to spend time and be able to identify those type of things when you're in lower levels. I don't know how much you really see that type of stuff, especially if we were playing against someone who tried to get all exotic with their coverages, we would just go really fast. And it's really hard to do that type of stuff when you're not huddling, when you're going at a super high up-tempo type thing, another great kind of reason why you want to go up tempo but that's a great question the other question about the drop i did that drop uh in the digit system marks was a big fan on the kind of open drop back thing it's funny because <laughs> i used to make fun of guys in the league that i thought did that it just looked funky to me like it's like god you know everybody knows you're throwing to the left like i don't know it just didn't make sense to me then i spent so much time practicing it like i mean too much time practicing it and it became, I loved it because I felt like you could see, it was kind of like being a batter all of a sudden, never being able to have like an open stance. And all of a sudden you're like, Hey, if I open up, I can kind of get both eyes and see the fastball, see the spin. 
Like it's way better. So like I loved it. And to me, it also really allowed me to get all my feet in the ground. So kind of like boom, hit hard and no be make sure I'm lined up to the left. And it's really only on a few plays. I think it was like short post play specifically to the left, but I loved it. I don't teach it. And mostly because we don't ever go under center. So it's a little bit different from shotgun. You know, I, I like to use more of like a shuffle as opposed to like a straight backwards back pedal like that. But I loved it when I was doing it. It's definitely old school though. Great question. Next question, Vitter. Love the content, JT. Thank you for taking the time to share your unbiased knowledge with us. I don't know about unbiased, but I try to be fair. Since you're very clued in on leadership, Dr. O'Sullivan, appreciate that. So I've heard, yeah, exactly. Can you tell us how you class different types of leaders, on-field, locker room, practice, and how you change your perception of the game as you became more experienced? How did you try to instill leadership qualities amongst your high school team? How did you lead as a backup? Any other leaders you've met across your life or examples you'd like to share outside of football? Thank you. Love from a Portuguese guy living in sunny England. That's funny. Yeah, there you go with the Porcho and the England flag. Hey, that is a great question. And I'm really, really excited to dive into the leadership content here as this con channel continues to grow. I really want to spend, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but in the off season, we're going to have some sort of like leadership bucket, window, playlist, something, because it is a passion of mine. I teach a, sport, a class, Leadership in Sports, out here at USD in San Diego. I love it. It's two passions of mine, and I want to find a way to fuse it and kind of bring it into the this channel and the life of like what I'm doing because it's a really big part of what I enjoy, what I like to read, and I just think it's fun, interesting stuff. So I'm going to find a way to do it. I'm not going to necessarily do it on a Friday Q&A, but I love the question, and I'm going to come back to it at some point in the offseason. So thank you. I appreciate it and look forward to it soon. All right. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate the support. See you next time.